I passed the CK exam and in this video, I'm going to share with you my experience on how I passed the exam, what resources I used to prepare, some important tips and tricks to help you pass your exam and also discuss the topics on which I got questions in the real CK exam. This video is going to be super informative. So make sure you watch this video till the end. Also, please like this video, subscribe to CloudSham and let's start. So I'm here on my computer screen and I have a very nice documentation created which includes all the important links for the resources I used, the important topics that you should know and a lot more that will help you prepare for your CK exam. And if you want me to share this document, do let me know in the comment section. So let's begin with understanding what is CKA or Certified Kubernetes Administrator exam or what things you should know before sitting for the exam. So I have a certification page attached here which has all the information you will require to know before sitting for the exam and you can go ahead and read about it if you want to. But there are a few things I want to point out. The first is the price of the exam is $395 but there are always discounts which can help you get this exam for a lower price. I bought the CKA and the CKAD bundle for about 400 something dollars in the discount so you can always check for that. Second thing I want to point out is the domains. This exam will have questions on all this like storage, troubleshooting, workload scheduling, cluster architecture and all this. Make sure you go through these topics very thoroughly so that you understand what questions you can expect in the real exam. The CKA exam is an online proctored web browser based exam where you need to install the PSI browser and someone is going to watch you throughout the exam. In the exam, you are given around 17 questions that you need to solve in two hours, which is 120 minutes. And to solve these questions, you're also given access to the official Kubernetes documentation so you can use and refer this documentation to find answers, which is very, very helpful. And the Kubernetes version used in the exam is going to be version 1.28 and you are given two attempts for this exam. So even if you fail the exam in the first attempt, you can try again in the second attempt and pass the exam. In the exam, we will get around 17 questions to solve in 120 minutes. And these questions are not MCQ, but scenario based questions where you are asked to complete a task, which can be upgrading cluster or taking backup or finding CPU memory, anything. Then next important update to know is questions don't have weightage anymore. Earlier CK exam questions had weightage, which explains how important the question is, but now they don't have weightage anymore. So you need to understand and prioritize based on the question asked. You will not have weightage anymore. You get two retakes and the passing score is 66%. I failed my exam in the first attempt. I got around 61%. With second attempt, I passed the exam where I got 89%. So you get two retakes and this is all about CK exam. Now let's look at the resources I used to prepare for my exam. So the resources I used to prepare for the CK exam include Kubernetes official documentation, the CK mock practice test by code cloud, killer SH practice test that you get when you pay for the certification and also the free killer coda scenarios that you get from this website here. As I already had experience working with Kubernetes, I knew most of the stuff and this is why I didn't took any dedicated course for Kubernetes. Instead, I started practicing with these practice tests and I used to come back and read about a certain topic if I'm confused. So let's say I had a doubt about taints and toleration. I used to go and read on the Kubernetes official documentation. But if you're someone who is very new to Kubernetes, I would obviously recommend you doing a dedicated course. I recommend doing the Kubernetes course by Mumshad Manabat on, uh, on Udemy or you can also do it from his own platform, which is CodeCloud. But if you already have experience and you want to save time, you can directly jump on the practice test and start reading things on the Kubernetes official documentation. For me, it took around 20 to 25 days because I was also working and preparing at the same time. So it took me around 20 to 25 days for this exam preparation. But if you're new, you might take around two to three months, which depends. Now, let me give you some important tips that will help you save so much time in the exam and also help you from failing the exam. And I know this because I already failed once. So the first step is practice, practice, practice. There is no other way apart from practicing that will help you pass this exam. As this exam is not MCQ, you don't have to memorize stuff. The only way to pass is by practicing. And you can practice by using the killer coda scenarios, which is totally free. You also get two sets of killer research practice tests when you pay for the exam. And if you want to practice more, you can also buy the CKA practice test by code cloud. These practice tests are a bit difficult from the real exam, but it will help you prepare for the exam better. So make sure you practice thoroughly before sitting for the exam. The second tip is to familiarize yourself with documentation. As we already know, the CK exam is an open book exam where you get access to the official documentation. Make sure you're very familiar with the documentation 
and you also know where to find the answers let's say you have a question where you're asked to create persistent volume for a pod then you need to know that if i search for pv year i will get a list of documentations and i need to check the right ones so if i click on this this will give you the manifest file to create pv but to get the actual manifest instead of clicking on the first link i would say click on the second link because this link has persistent volume manifest along with persistent volume claim manifest along with how to attach it to your pod using volume mounts so you need to be very familiar with the documentation and you need to understand which document will help you find the right solution so make sure you are familiar with the documentation i have links attached here and go through them thoroughly before sitting for your exam the next tip is to be fast we know the exam contains 17 questions that you need to complete in 120 minutes which is not going to be enough if you don't follow these tips which is to use imperative commands you should use imperative commands rather than writing manifest files yourself or from the documentation which will help you save so much time for example the question is to create a deployment using nginx image having two replicas the first way is to go in the documentation search for deployment then search for the manifest file copy it edit it and then you can apply uh, to create the deployment the second way is to use imperative command which is kubectl create to create a deployment let me show you an example you can simply run the command kubectl create deployment name of the deployment my deploy dash dash image which is going to be nginx dash dash replicas is going to be 2 and you can see deployment is now created we can confirm by running kubectl get deployment now my deploy is ready having two replicas created 11 seconds ago so this is how you can save time rather than writing manifest file yourself you can use imperative command and, th and there are different imperative commands which i have discussed in this particular video so i would highly recommend you checking out this important kubernetes kubectl commands before sitting for the exam which will help you so much time you can also check out the commands from this documentation here which has the list of all the different commands so we have run command to create a pod we have create commands to create deployments replica sets everything else using imperative commands so the first tip is to use imperative command which will help you save time the second is to flag difficult questions and solve them at the last now we know that the questions don't have weightage anymore we don't know if the question is of 10 marks or 15 marks or just 2 marks so you need to read the question and understand how much is the weightage and if it is important and when you still don't know how to do it you can flag the question and come back to it at the end of the exam rather than wasting your time on that because we just have 120 minutes so you can always flag the difficult questions that might take time and solve them at the last next thing is to use control f to search through the documentation for example you will be having a browser something like this and you want to search for something let's say you want to search for uh, kind so you can simply search for kind here and you can see that you have a search bar like this and this browser is similar to what you will see in the real browser as well so you can use control f to search throughout the documentation rather than scrolling it and trying to find the manifest files yourself so use control f flag the questions and use imperative command to save your time apart from this you might have heard or read about setting up aliases or enabling autocomplete before you start your exam but that's not required because the environment is already configured with autocomplete enabled and aliases set but if you want to have your own aliases you can do it but i don't recommend that and i haven't done it because that's not actually required next step is to copy paste everything you can rather than typing it yourself so let's say you have a question where you are asked to create a deployment named 757 something and you are asked to use the image nginx colon 1.17 and you want to have three replicas so rather than you typing the names of the deployments or the images you should be copying and pasting it similarly even when you are using manifest files from the documentation you can simply copy and paste which will help you save time also save you from avoiding mistakes so make sure to copy paste everywhere everything you can the next step is very important which if i would have followed i would have passed the exam in the first attempt which is to read and understand the questions before answering them the questions in the real exam are tricky you might be confused if the question is asking you to do a single task or two task or three task so make sure you read the questions thoroughly understand what is asked and then perform the solutions the last step is to always recheck before moving to the next question what do i mean by this let's say the question is asked to create a deployment with the name my deploy having image nginx you should always confirm by running kubectl get deployment to check if the deployment has been created if you have done actually what is asked in the question to avoid losing marks so always recheck before moving to the next question 
And so these are all the important tips that I would highly recommend you to follow to make sure you pass your exam with a good score. Lastly, now let's look at the important topics that you don't want to miss if you want to get good score in CKA. So these are all the important topics that you will get questions from and I'm very sure about this because I've sat for the exam twice and I also have seen many questions from these topics. So I would recommend you practicing all these topics because I'm 100% sure that the questions are going to come from these different topics. The first is HCD backup and restore. If you don't know what HCD is, you might need to check out my previous video. But HCD is where you store all the information and in the CK exam, you are going to be asked to create a backup and then restore that backup. So I have the link attached for the documentation, which will tell you how you can create backups for HCD using this command and also tell you how to restore that backup using this command here or using this command if the question does not have the data directory mentioned. So this is one very important question that you should obviously know before sitting for the exam. The next one is cluster upgrade. There is obviously a question which will ask you to upgrade the cluster from version this to version that and you need to know how to do this which you can find from this documentation here. In this documentation you will have steps to upgrade kubeadm from version 1.26 to 1.27 or from any other version and you can follow the steps mentioned here to upgrade your clusters from one version to another. The next important topic is working with persistent volumes and persistent volume claims. There are many questions in the exam where you're asked to create a persistent volume of 10 GB having read write only access uh, using this host path or even you might have a question where the persistent volume is already created and you're asked to create PVCs. So you can use this documentation here which will help you show how you can create persistent volume of 10 GB with read write once access mode having a host path at this path something like this or a question which might be create a persistent volume claim with the storage class name as manual or attach the persistent volume to a pod using this. So this is a very important topic and I would recommend you going through it. Next is network policies. This is one of the tricky questions that I got which is to create a network policy for a pod and you can go through this documentation. In this documentation if you click on this network policy resource you get a manifest which will help you answer the question asked in the exam. You can edit this manifest according to what is asked in the exam. Next is ingress. Ingress is also something that will appear in your exam. In my exam I got a question where I need to create an ingress which exposes a backend service and you can use this manifest file. I use the same exact manifest file just changing the values to create ingress. And I Next is JSON path. In the exam you will get questions where you are asked to fetch the values from manifest file using JSON path. So you need to know what is JSON path, how to use them. You are also expected to know what is custom columns and how you can use them. So I have a reference document attached here and if you search for JSON path, you will find examples on how you can get internal IP or maybe a CPU or anything like that. This is how you can use JSON path to get the password for ETE users or other stuff. Next important topic is monitoring and logging of pods and nodes. You will have questions where they are going to ask you find the pod having most CPU and put the name in a particular file or find the logs for the pod and put the logs in a file something like that. So you will need to know how to how to check logs and how to get how to monitor pods. To monitor you can use the kubectl top command for logs you can use the kubectl log command. Similarly it's very important for you to understand how to work with vim and nano because you're going to be asked to edit manifest file and if you don't know how to use vim and nano you will waste a lot of time. So I would recommend you knowing some shortcuts on how to go to a particular line, how to find a particular term in Vim or Nano, whatever you use. Lastly, this is also something which is very important. You need to know how to create cluster rules, uh, rule bindings, what is service account, how to create a rule, having permissions for a particular resource and all that. So these here are all the important topics and you will get questions from these topics 100%. So make sure you practice them and I have links for all this documentation here. If you want me to share this document, do let me know in the comment section. And this was our video. I hope now you have an idea of how I passed my CK exam. And if you follow everything that we have discussed in this video, I am pretty sure you will pass your exam as well. With that being said, I wish you best luck for your CK exam. And if you have any questions, any doubt, do let me know in the comment section. And if you passed your exam, do share it on LinkedIn. Don't forget to tag me. Thank you and have a good day.